Hi everyone, my name's Brittany and I'm a keeper in the Houston Toad Recovery Program here behind the scenes at the Houston Zoo. And it's a very exciting time for us right now because it's breeding season. We actually have toads in the tanks right now laying eggs or at least working on it right now. So we are only three weeks in so far, uh, but over the last two weeks, we have released 37 egg strands, which amounts to about 200,000 eggs. Um, so we take them out and we release them in the ponds where wild toads are actively laying eggs. Um, we actually had our biologist from Texas State was out there in February and he saw lots of pairs amplexing, laying eggs, and lots of wild strands. So that way we can kind of see that we're actually doing something for these guys out there in the wild. They are returning to the ponds, they are calling, and they are laying eggs. So the Houston Zoo has been involved with the Houston toad since 2007, but we actually worked with them way back in the 80s as well. So the program back in the 80s, their main goal was to figure out a way to house the Houston toads in captivity, figure out a way to get them to breed, and then how to rear the eggs in captivity so we could help them because they were added to the endangered species list in 1970. So the Houston Zoo really stepped up and said, we've got to do something for these guys. Unfortunately, after several years, the program had to be shut down due to funding issues. But back in 2007, we picked it right back up. And then we were releasing, we were actually releasing head started individuals. So what that meant was when 2000, in 2007, when we started, we were getting the toads to lay eggs. We were keeping those eggs back and we were actually raising those individuals here at the zoo and then releasing them out in the wild during the following breeding season. The problem with that is that it is very time consuming. It costs quite a bit of money to feed these guys for a whole year and takes a lot of manpower. So uh, in 2011, when the wildfires happened in Bastrop, we took a break. And in 2013 was when the program became what it is now. We started releasing the egg strands. So these guys are explosive breeders. We've all seen the documentaries where all the wildebeests have their babies at the same time and it helps protect them from predators. Same with these guys. During breeding season, they all kind of get together at the same time and lay their eggs. So while those eggs are emerging, there's lots of babies for the predators to prey on, which means more individuals survive. So we try and mimic that. Each week, we gather up the eggs, we take them out there and release them with the wild eggs, and then they all emerge at the same time. So we do have a question. It says, what do the egg strands look like? So as you see right there, there are some eggs sitting behind that pair. Um, there are actually two strands, and they come out in a jelly, and they come out in actual strands. Sometimes they will kind of curl around each other, but they are a full strand. That's how toads lay eggs. Frogs, on the other hand, if you happen to find some eggs, kind of look like, um, what is it, bu bubble tea? With the little bubbles? That is what frog eggs look like. They are actually, they are laid in jelly, but they kind of come out individually. So there's a nice little difference. If you happen to find some eggs in your backyard, you can kind of figure out who laid those. And you see that male there, he's trying to hold on. Uh, they are in amplexus. That is how, well, frogs and toads at least, that is how they breed. So the male, he actually has little calluses on the inside of his hands there on the front. And he uses those to help hold on and grip the female. You can kind of see him squeezing a little bit. Not only does that help her lay the eggs, uh, but it also ensures that he is the one fertilizing them. So speaking of eggs, we've actually had a really cool development recently. We had a veterinarian from the Fort Worth Zoo come down recently and she specializes in amphibian reproduction. And she actually taught us and our vet techs here at the zoo how to do ultrasounds on these guys. 
because up there they have a smaller population. We do partner with several other zoos, Dallas Zoo, Fort Worth Zoo, and then Texas Parks and Wildlife and US Fish and Wildlife. So the program is not just here at the Houston Zoo. Now up at Fort Worth they have fewer individuals, so they actually do ultrasounds on every single one of their females leading up to breeding season so they can keep track on egg development and how much hormone to use in each of their toads to help kind of move them along with laying their eggs. So she came down and she taught us how to ultrasound these guys and unfortunately we have a lot of toads here at the zoo and so it is not really feasible for us yet to be able to ultrasound every single female leading up to breeding season. But what we hope to do, at least starting this year, is so we have an assurance, an assurance round of toads that will go on. And that assurance round is our eggs that we will be keeping a couple of strands of those here at the zoo to raise up to keep in our colony. Uh, so those ladies we will actually be ultrasounding to keep track of their egg development and see if maybe they need a priming dose to kind of get it jump started, get their eggs started to develop in there so that when we're ready to breed them, they have lots of eggs to lay for us. And you see that lady there, she's actually laid quite a few eggs so far. She should almost be done. Now, right now we only have two egg strands going, but hopefully the rest of these ladies will decide to give us some eggs over the next several hours because tomorrow morning we will be loading up all of these eggs and taking them out to release up in Bastrop. We actually have a question that says, where do you release eggs in the wild? So we have a partnership with the Boy Scouts and they actually have a property up in Bastrop and that is where we release the eggs. You can see those guys, she just hasn't laid her eggs yet, but he is still holding on. And Plexus is kind of cute in my opinion. They look like little backpacks riding the female around and they do a pretty good job hanging on. Hopefully he will encourage her to lay some eggs. So now is actually a great time to come and visit the Houston Zoo. The Houston Zoo will be turning 100 this year. Yes, guys, 100 years old. And though I've only worked here for two and a half years, uh, the Houston Zoo has been my zoo for the last 30. Uh, coming here as a child with my family, coming here on school field trips, just like a lot of you guys do. And now I get to bring my nieces and nephews here and kind of share my love for animals. We get to learn cool new animal facts every time we come. You see those guys there? She hopefully will have lots of eggs for us because she is definitely quite round. A lot of these ladies leading up to breeding season, you can kind of tell when they have eggs in them. Um, they feel full. Sometimes their skin will kind of sound like the feeling, that feeling when you rub against a balloon full of air. They kind of feel like that sometimes, which is a little silly. Uh, and their bellies get really blue when they're when their ovaries are full of eggs. And you can kind of see that before breeding season. Now the ladies who haven't quite developed them or are a little too young, they kind of feel like an empty sack. And so we've kind of, we've been doing this for a while so we can kind of tell uh, with our experience kind of who's gonna lay eggs and who's not. We have another question, how can we help save them in the wild? So there's a couple things you guys can do. A very easy thing that everyone can do at home is work on switching to reusable water bottles, right? You know, a lot of us, we have plastic water bottles at home and it is perfectly fine to have a case of water bottles at home for hurricane season. We all experience the same thing, right? But you know, for your everyday use, get yourself a nice reusable water bottle and that is a great way to help reduce plastic waste and help these guys out in the wild. You can also dispose of your batteries properly. Batteries that aren't disposed of properly can release toxins out in the wild. And these guys are amphibians, so their environment means a lot. They soak up everything. 
So if batteries have been disposed of improperly, they're releasing toxins out there, these guys can get sick and unfortunately they can die. And we don't want that. So look into how to properly dispose of your batteries. Now the lady you're looking at right now, her name is Feisty. She got that name because she's a little sassy. Not all of our toads have names, uh, but some of them, their personality uh, kind of shines and we give them a nice little name. We have another question. How many eggs have been released in 2022? So we've only been in this three weeks now. Over the last two weeks, we have released 37 egg strands. And that's between all three of the rooms we have here at the Houston Zoo which equates to about 200,000 eggs, give or take. And we take those out once a week. We are a little limited on space, so we only have you know, so, many, so many toads that we can breed every week. Also, we only have one vehicle, uh, so, so we can't have a whole bunch of egg strands going out every week. So Right now we're working on eight of the 10 tanks and that is because we're actually gonna change something else this year. In past years, we have waited till the very last week of breeding and that is when we do our assurance strands. Those strands are meant to stay here at the zoo. The problem with that is those tadpoles are raised in the tanks that the breeding is going on in. So once those eggs are laid and we're keeping them, we can't reuse those tanks at least for the rest of the season until those guys have emerged. So what we're doing is we're gonna leave two tanks empty and those two tanks here in a couple of weeks, we will put some of our high priority females and males in in hopes that they will lay in the middle of season at the peak when everyone is wanting to breed and lay eggs. And hopefully we will get some nice healthy assurance strands. And then of course at the end of the breeding season, if we need more, we will breed some more of our assurance toads. Now I'm talking about assurance toads and genetics and all that kind of stuff. So we get what's called a mate RX every year that lists all of the toads that we have here in the recovery program. And it kind of gives us suggestions on who to breed. So we're not just throwing toads around and hoping they will have eggs. All of these guys were planned to breed. And what that's gonna do is these guys are improving the genetics out in the wild because that's where their eggs are going. And then our high priorities are ones whose genetics are not super well represented here in the colony. So those guys will be bred for our assurance and they'll get held back. And then we will keep some of those. Now we will keep about 500 eggs from, those stra from each strand, raise them here once they emerge. Depending on how many we have, we will decide on how many individuals we are gonna keep. And then with those, anyone who is, is not kept, we do release out in the wild again. We do an extra release several weeks after breeding season to put those guys back out in the wild. Okay guys, so thank you for tuning in. Make sure to join us next Wednesday at 11 a.m. for the Facebook Live. And remember, every time you visit the Houston Zoo, you are helping us save animals in the wild.